Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I'm Austin Ward, joined by the defensive expert, Zach Bourne, in here for another Buck IQ. And we went through uh, 13 straight wins and we had to try and scratch and claw to find some flaws for Ohio State to fix. Then some big plays pop back up in the Fiesta Bowl. It is. You know, the, the common theme in, in 2018 was the big play and how it hurt Ohio State so badly. And this year, you know, yeah, we've, we've shown the good so many times. And there were a couple games, you know, late in the year where it's like, hey, you know, they gave up a touchdown drive and why did it happen? But they weren't really giving up that big play, right? And we saw it multiple times in the game against Clemson. Uh, you know, obviously, eight, Trevor, or Travis Atien was able to get in some space, be mm -hmm. able to make some people miss. Saw Trevor Lawrence on a quarterback draw with a long touchdown run. There were just multiple times where the Ohio State defense wasn't sound, wasn't taking the proper angles. They all, all 11 weren't on the same page. And you barely saw that throughout the year. I, you know, I don't know if it's a big game thing. I don't know if you know you saw Josh Proctor playing a lot. You saw Baron Browning playing a lot. But those guys, I mean, the, the unity is so tight that those guys are playing so much together in practice. It, it, you know, I, who knows? Who knows what it was? But they were not on the same page. And as defense, all eleven players have to be on the same page, all firing to the football and all doing their job. Yeah. And when you talk about guys like Proctor and Browning, I mean, they're. I don't know how often they will watch these clips. Um, they're probably going to hear about it and see about yep. it a lot. That's probably going to fuel their offseason, and those two guys are going to have to play big roles if Ohio State's going back to playoff next year. It is. Th those two are great players. You know, I don't think anyone's pointing the finger at them. I, I think, you know, with how talented those guys are, you're right. Them coming back, this team is losing a lot. Uh, on the offensive side, on the defensive side, especially in the secondary, especially on the defensive line, this team is losing so much that these young guys like Josh Proctor, like Baron Browning, these guys that you know have played some key roles but maybe not so much a starter, not so much relied on mm -hmm. uh, to, to dominate games and make plays, they're going to be relied on, right? They, they have a huge offseason coming up, you know, especially in the secondary, got to uh, replace three guys. You know, Amir Reap is going to have to play big. Josh Proctor is going to have to fill in for Jordan Fuller. There's a lot of guys that are going to need to step up. And it, this offseason, they're going to work with Mickey Marotti. They're going to work with, uh, you know, the new defense coordinator, whoever that may be. Those guys are going to come in and have to do some big things. All right, we're not ready to be done with this Fiesta Bowl yet. It's Getting ready to look ahead to 2020, you got to look back at what happened in 2019 before we do that. So Zach's going to break it down for us right now. Let's roll the tape. All right, Zach, it's been a while since we've had one of these that uh, resulted in a loss for the Ohio State defense, and certainly they had the number of big plays. This one, uh, I don't know, they all hurt for Ohio State, but this was the one that kind of really felt like the momentum swung. Yeah, it really did, right? 16-7, you know, it, yeah, I mean, this one stung the most for sure. This is, you know, it, we talked about the big play so many times last year, and Ohio State defense really hasn't given up those big plays this year, and you saw it a couple times in this game, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where guys are out of position, guys are taking bad angles, and, you know, you see it right here. It's it's almost like there's a stunt game here with Baron Browning and Malik Harrison, so it's almost like if Baron Browning is supposed to go this way and Malik Harrison's coming this way, Cornell in the, the defense line have to be coming over here. So either Cornell gets cut off by the center and doesn't get over top of his face, right? Or Baron Brown, he's not going in the right angle, or it could be a cross blitz and Malik Harrison's going back the other way. But there's some kind of game up front where there's a miscommunication, because if you see this, you've got four hats on this side of the ball, and they, they should never, they, it, just from an angle standpoint and a lane standpoint, they shouldn't be over here. You got hat, 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 you got Malik Harrison, Baron Brown, and going in the same hole and you got Chase Young on the outside here. This frees up, and there's no one sitting here in the middle. This is something that's a complete breakdown of the defense, and we haven't seen this all year. Yeah, it's because it, if you're, we don't know the call exactly, right? But either Malik Harrison or Baron Browning, somebody's leaving Listen, a gap. Listen, you up. pause it right here. We don't know the call, right? Yeah. Exactly. There is no way this defense should be looking like this. With these guys running up field and four guys on this side of the ball with no help right here in the middle, it should not be looking that way whatsoever. Whether Baron Browning come here and Malik Harrison come over top, defense alignment get on top of the on get on get top of the center and then the two linebackers come this way or Baron Browning just taking the wrong angle, right? One of those things happened in and it was just a complete breakdown of the defense. And then the, the seize part here, and then you've got the situation. That there are two safeties here that have a chance to make a play, and, and Josh Proctor will be thinking about that the entire offseason. He really will. You know, and this is something, this is the hardest tackle in football. Open field for a safety. You've got the entire field for this guy to make a play. This is the hardest tackle, but 
this guy plays center field because of being a great tackler, right? All free safeties, Jordan Fuller, Josh Proctor, they have to be the best tackler on the field. And obviously in this situation, he doesn't break down, lets Trevor Lawrence make a little move, and Trevor Lawrence is gone. Yeah, and he wasn't really known for his speed, but you have both those safeties uh, missing on him, and he sprints to the end zone, and then the game kind of changes. And, you know, there'd be some in the second half, obviously opportunities for Ohio State where they got to get off the field. And we saw more of this, you know, long, uh, explosive plays that we spent all of 2018 talking yep. about. They popped up at the end of 2019 at the worst possible moment. We did, and we, you know, we've seen Ohio State go to so much cover one man coverage this year, right? And with with linebackers, right, a lot of times when it's like this, everyone's manned up right here. These guys are playing me, you on the back. If you rewind it, if you rewind it from the very beginning, these guys are yelling at each other, me, you, me, you. Everyone may be like, what's that mean? It's me, you on the back. So these two guys are basically playing me, you on the back. If Trevor Etienne were to swing this way, Baron Browning's got him. If if Etienne comes up here in the middle, since he's on this side, Malik Harrison's got him. Mm -hmm. If he goes out here, Malik Harrison's got him. Baron Browning's job is to basically be the spy then, right? You've got quarterback, you've got any kind of help, you're reading the quarterback's eyes. So it's cover one, you see Pete Warner, you see everyone lined up, man coverage, me, you on the back, Malik Harrison sees him coming out, he's got a fire on him, right? Instead, he kind it takes a bad angle here. Offensive lineman just gets enough of him. He doesn't break down, tries to make a running tackle, right, and doesn't get it. And you see, in cover one coverage, look at this. Everyone's playing man. you got Jordan Fuller back here in the back, but you've got all these big uglies in a ton of space because he's responsible for the running back. You saw Baron Browning went kind of over the tight end to help Pete Warner a little bit. Yep. He tries to come back, doesn't make a play. This is a very fast guy, and you saw what he's able to do in some space. Yeah, you've got to... You, you can't give uh, free extra opportunities, free yardage to guys like Clemson. They're too explosive to make you pay. Same thing happened on the final drive of the game here. Uh, a, a great play call, as you said before we even started this, Zach, but you still got to execute a little bit, and this is the kind of stuff that – That'll bite you. It, it is. And if you run it back, it's the same thing. It goes back to cover one. Everyone is manned up, right? The difference is Josh Proctor is on the tight end, right? Instead of going four wide, they have a tight end in, meaning Josh Proctor is playing in here. So then you bump. He's yelling at the linebackers, bump, bump, right? So he comes down. He's kind of playing that third linebacker spot, but he's still in charge of that tight end. Instead, these linebackers are still me, you on the back, right? Back comes out, and yes, Trevor Lawrence sells its great play design. You think it's a run, but still, these guys are responsible for the back, and when the back goes right by you without blocking you, hey, something's up, right? So instead, you see it. Josh Proctor tries to come off. You know, he sees his tight end right here. This is his tight end that's blocking. So he tries to come off and is uh, half a step short from making a play on this football. Mm. But still, all these guys have their back turns and their man coverage. And when you get a running back in, play, in space playing cover one and no one's on him, it's hard to make a play. And there you go. You see another big play. Yeah, there's the end result. So those are, the, you know, some guys on the field there. Josh Proctor a couple times brought up his name. Baron Browning's coming back. These guys will be thinking about that uh, all throughout this offseason, trying to get better as Ohio State looks to get back to the college football playoff. Next year, Zach will be breaking down the defense all year for us and heading into 2020 as well as we keep looking at the Buckeyes at Letterman Row. For Zach, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buckeye Q with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.